How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with the majestic host, the Savior. Oh yes, it's good to be back. I'm sorry, I've been gone for a while, but I had to recover from a terrible bout of the Chinese virus. That name gets further and further away from China, as opposed to calling it the Chinese virus. Come, come, come flu, the Chinese virus. Come, come flu, the, the, the Chinese virus. Don't you understand? Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up on the Harry Potter games, okay? That was just my vibe. At Christmas time, I still just blast the old Harry Potter tunes in the background because I just can't get enough of it. They are simply just cozy, okay? You know, I'm talking about like the PlayStation 2 and the PC uh, Harry Potter games, and that was back in the time when you know, you would get the same release, but actually there would be different games on different platforms. So the PC version of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets would be different compared to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on the PS2, for example. And I enjoyed both of them because they were just amazing games. That was my childhood and the music in those games were just simply the best. OK, if you know, you know, but Hogwarts Legacy, OK, I am a little bit mixed on Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I'm going to give you a quick review of Hogwarts Legacy at the end of the video, but first I'm going to talk about this Hogwarts Legacy Switch review and basically just go on what the details are and the differences between them because I have actually played it. I can't show you the full footage, obviously, for obvious reasons, but um, I can give you some details that are allowed to be shared, basically some of the differences, and hopefully this will help you decide if it is worth actually um, picking up Hogwarts Legacy on Switch. If you are one of those people who have been waiting for a long time, then basically rest assured because, you know, it is playable. I wouldn't say it's the ideal version, <laughs> that's for sure. And there are some issues, but that's why I wanted to bring up, you know, how these games were different on different consoles in the past. They've stopped doing that for obvious reasons, but I really miss those times because it made, you know, it exciting, you know, playing like the different version on Nintendo DS compared to what you would get on the bigger consoles. You know, the games would be different, but they would actually have to craft a whole new game and new mechanics to make it different. What's next? Discussion of bouncing breasts? That actually would be great. Hey, you've got a real bounce to your chest. Oh, please, I'm embarrassed, but thank you. Now here is Hogwarts Legacy on Nintendo Switch. Some gameplay, as you can see, it looks pretty goddamn amazing. That's because it's actually on PC. But anyway, Hogwarts Legacy on Switch is actually not too bad, but it's just weird, okay? I've just got a lot to say in this video because gaming has reached a very weird point because we're not doing the olden days. We're not doing what we used to do, like I said, where we would actually get different versions of the games on different platforms. That was cool because, like I said, it was an opportunity for different developers or the same developers basically changing up the gameplay mechanics. And that's what makes a game interesting is the gameplay mechanics, not so much, you know, the look of a game. That really doesn't matter. If the game is good, it can look like a pile of shit, but still be enjoyable. And a lot of modern day big AAA studios seem to forget that, you know, they want to make the most realistic game possible. I said Sebastian Swallow. That's why a lot of big budget games feel like movies because they just care too much about replicating movies and high quality graphics instead of actually innovative interesting gameplay. Um, you know Spider-Man 2 is a good game but could it be a better game if they maybe you know focused more on gameplay mechanics and less on the cinematic kind of hyper-realistic graphics? Yes, I think so. And that's the same with a lot of games. Hogwarts Legacy on PC and for Xbox and PlayStation 5, they all looked very good, but it wasn't trying to capture that hyper-realistic Uncharted or Last of Us Call of Duty realistic graphics, which so many games are trying to do now. And like I said, I think it's destroying games. It had a nice artistic design to it and you know, the characters and stuff, they weren't trying to look hyper-realistic. They were kind of supposed to look a little bit cartoonish, a little bit more um, just animated, if that makes sense, more Disney-esque. And I do love me some Harry Potter. I just find it so funny still that they were trying to boycott J.K. Rowling over Hogwarts Legacy, which is 
just the sad state of affairs that we live in where you literally want to boycott a game and you know so many people worked on this game so many people put you know days and hours and pretty much a bunch of their total lifespan into creating this art for you to play if you want because we all live under capitalism so you can choose whether or not to buy the game but they still want to boycott it and destroy everyone's hard work because of an opinion which is rooted in science that's that's the level of peak intelligence that we've reached as a civilization but i digress hogwarts legacy came out it was a good game everyone enjoyed it what i said work your magic Onto my face, 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 face. Work your magic on my face. Just work your magic on my face. Liquid bath on my face. Liquid sauce on my face. Sebastian swore I'd leave no trace on my face. On my face. But I do have some gripes with Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm going to talk about that quickly at the end of the review because I do feel like um, they missed the boat on some things, and I've had a lot of time to digest the game now, so I can give you better opinions on it compared to my initial review. So here is my Hogwarts Legacy Nintendo Switch review, and this Hogwarts Legacy Switch review. Like I said, I can't give you all the details, as it's not, you know, out for the public as of yet, but I have played it, rest assured. Um... It's not based on extensive research, this one. I have actually tried it out. And I was one of those people who was going to wait to actually play it originally on Switch, but I couldn't wait and I just bought a next-gen console um, because I love Harry Potter that much. But I feel like they basically kept everything that was in the game here. It's not like they stripped away gameplay mechanics, which is a good thing because that's what I was worried about. It's not like there's added loading screens per se, but it does take... A very very long time compared to you know say the ps5 kind of the ps4 version but it's much worse than the ps4 version even when it comes to low times fps drops and fps in general so it's not great but it's playable a good comparison i would say is the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom okay they basically took the first game but they ramped it up and they basically made it much bigger much grander um and they just added so much into that game, which is pretty crazy, but the Switch is an old, old device. It's pretty much a mobile, okay? It's just a mobile, but it's, you know, built for gaming, and you can take it anywhere you want, and it has nice, you know, joy joy cons and all that stuff. I do love my Switch, um, but it is old. It is dated when it comes to the actual hardware, and that game, you know, suffered FPS drops, and that was, you know, made and marketed for Nintendo, by Nintendo, you know. So, of course, I had so much optimization. Hogwarts Legacy, they did a good job. It's not a completely terrible port, but it does suffer, okay? It's not smooth experience. Don't expect solid FPS all the time. The loading times, like I said, are pretty atrocious. But to me, the worst thing is just how it looks, okay? Now, like I said, they kept the gameplay, core gameplay, intact. And I do like some of the changes because it does feel more like a GameCube kind of early PSP port. I'm glad they did make some artistic decisions here because it could have just ended up looking like you were playing on a super low-end PC like a potato and you just have everything turned down. And at some times it does look like that, but they did change the art style and even some of the engine uh, they actually tweaked and twiddled with because... Yes, that is a word, because apparently they did actually change some engine tweaks because the lighting just wouldn't work on, you know, porting it to Nintendo Switch. I'm actually saying that's a good thing because it does have this nice aesthetic quality to it, but at times when it's trying to replicate what the, you know, main titles are doing, that's when it looks terrible. In the open world, okay, it does not look good. The detail is just completely gone. It's just all missing. It's a blurry mess. And the anti-aliasing is the biggest problem here. Everything seems to just jump around and move around because it just can't keep up with the detail. Reflections are actually interesting because, like I said, they changed it with the with the engine. And actually, some of the reflections look pretty good, but they aren't detailed. Everything's just like a blur. But it's in these big open world sections. This is PC gameplay, by the way, of course. But um, it just looks not good. And, you know, when it's really heavily... Um, focused environments like for Forbidden Forest for example. So my final thoughts on this Hogwarts Legacy Switch review or Hogwarts Legacy Nintendo Switch review is that I just wish they doubled down on the kind of GameCube PS1, PS2 vibe 
art style because they did have to change things here and some of it looks good but they could have doubled down on it and you know taken the time in the bigger environments to make that art style feel more unified but instead it's kind of disjointed because some of it looks kind of nice and quirky and you know cozy I guess that's the best way to describe it but at times like in the open world that's where it just looks terrible so I think this is going to be a very mixed bag for a lot of people but if you've never played it before you've got nothing to compare it and comparison is the thief of joy so basically don't be a slave to wealth if you can't afford Hogwarts Legacy on a next gen console and you haven't ever played it before, actually, you can still enjoy it just as much as the next man, because actually, it's still all intact, the gameplay, and that is the most important. So that is my Hogwarts Legacy Nintendo Switch review, and basically just looking at what's changed. Like I said, I can't talk about some of the features, but I can talk about what has been shown, and yeah, it's a mixed bag, I would say. They should have doubled down on this new kind of old school art style but instead it feels very just um downgraded of course um but with little care when it comes to the bigger more open environments in Hogwarts Legacy and there's going to be a lot of people who aren't happy with how consistent it runs and of course you can't expect much when it's literally running on a mobile the fact that they've managed to make Hogwarts load is literally insane so that is my Hogwarts Legacy Switch review and I honestly think if you can play it on something else, play it on something else. And this is where it takes me to the next point and this is something I wanted to talk about in this video and then I'll just close up the video with a Hogwarts Legacy re-review because it's been a while and I've managed to complete the game now. So why are we so focused on making games for platforms that shouldn't actually run these games. That's the weird thing, okay? Nintendo has always been known for innovative gameplay with Mario, Legend of Zelda, and Nintendo has some great ports, don't get me wrong, of older games, but why are we trying to create, you know, Nintendo Switch as with some kind of magical porting device with these massive big open world games? Imagine trying to port GTA or Red Dead Redemption. You know, Red Dead Redemption 1 was doable, but Red Dead Redemption 2? I'm not sure. I don't understand modern day gaming when it comes to graphical and fidelity. That's above everything else. That's above gameplay. That's above innovative new ideas. That's above, you know, interesting sound design or sound work. Instead of making a game that's engaging for the player, that makes you question and figure stuff out for yourself. Everything's more hand-holdy and cinematic because they want everything to feel and play like a movie. Why? Do games focus so much on that nowadays and then they try and port that over to platforms that simply can't handle them. We're trying to have this like one glove fits all mentality when it comes to gaming and it's okay that some, you know, platforms just can't play certain games. Having PC exclusives or, you know, Nintendo Switch exclusives, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you need to be tribal about it and hate other people who play on different platforms. Enjoy the games for what they are, but understand the limitations. Because I feel like, in the end, this is just going to hurt gaming, because if we try and do this, it's going to make games more focused about graphical things and how we can tweak them for certain platforms instead of good, interesting gameplay mechanics. And... I think they just should go back to the older days where if they're trying to make a game, change it for the platform, change the game so it's a new experience, then it's actually interesting because then people who've played the game before on other platforms can go to the Nintendo Switch and play Hogwarts Legacy on Nintendo Switch, but it's a different experience. To me, that's not a bad thing. So that's what I think. That is my Hogwarts Legacy game review. And let's just quickly end on what I think about Hogwarts Legacy as a game. I, as a British boy who grew up in England, I don't really think the UK has a lot going for it, but Harry Potter was always something I cherished because it teaches you to, you know, be... It teaches you to be brave in the face of adversity. It teaches you to be humble, not to value fame, and especially in the books compared to the movies, you know, it makes you question uh, information and the media or even the government with the Ministry of Magic stuff like that and a lot of people don't give it enough credit I feel because Harry Potter to me has shaped who I am because you know growing up that's all I ever watched that's all I ever listened to was the Harry Potter audiobooks I'm a massive Harry Potter fan and I think that the original uh, you know books have so much wisdom in them you know they are basically retelling old ancient stories about you know, basically slaying the dragon under the castle and the kind of hero's journey, but it's all done in a very 
smart way. So that's why it's very annoying seeing people just discard this story simply because of J.K. Rowling's politics, which is simply just absolutely ridiculous. And I've always wanted an open-world Harry Potter game. That's always been my dream. And Hogwarts Legacy fulfilled that dream. And I was so happy for the first couple of weeks when I was playing it. Exploring Hogwarts was absolutely amazing. But Hogwarts Legacy doesn't seem to care so much about Harry Potter and Hogwarts itself. It's trying to create this grand open world. And in that, I think that's where it fails. Because there's lots of interesting things to do and discover. But it's just the same as many big open world games. It's not as bad as Ubisoft. It reminds me more of something similar to Ghost of Tsushima where it borrows elements from the Ubisoft open world design approach, but it does try and do its own unique things. But at the end of the day, it does have a lot of repetitive content in it. It does have a lot of the same Merlin trials, the same exploration type beats that just get old after time. And they could have focused way more on Hogwarts and hidden passageways and all this kind of stuff, more on the choices, more on the consequences with using the dark arts, all that kind of stuff. They could have gone a lot deeper with characters following you about on your journey, more deeper conversations and branching dialogue trees and stuff like that. And I just feel like they missed the boat on, I just feel like Hogwarts Legacy does so many things right, but it misses so many fundamental elements like Quidditch and yeah, I just feel like it was more focused on being an open world game and, you know, kind of checklist design instead of a true Harry Potter, um, you know, kind of fantasy come to life because everyone just wants to explore Hogwarts and they do really care about the source material. There's so many Easter eggs in it, so you will enjoy this because of the Harry Potter theme. But as a game, it does feel like a game that we have played before and that is my only gripe with Hogwarts Legacy. And I just wanted to basically put that out there. I do think it's a great game. I do still very much enjoy it. But they feel, but I do feel like they missed certain aspects. I could have made this a legendary, the best Harry Potter game ever. But hopefully we will get a second one to basically just fine tune it. But there you go. That is my Hogwarts Legacy Nintendo Switch review. I do hope you enjoyed this one. I did get this out late because I just wanted time with it. And just to, you know, really focus and play Hogwarts Legacy again. Um, but yeah, I do hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.